So the, the, the number one myth is uh, the squat myth for glute development. Now think about it. When I squat, yeah. my glutes don't get sore. My quads get sore. My hamstrings sometimes get sore. My lower back gets sore. But if you're truly squatting in a, I'm talking not a perfect squat. I'm talking just how you would normally squat. You go out to the gym, put some weight on, on your back, squat. Chances are your quads are going to feel sore, right? Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, it's a leg exercise. Duh. A lot of people don't think about common mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. It's common sense. It's It really is common sense. And it's not just my opinion. It's EMG studies have right. been, I mean, there's hundreds of studies showing that squat is a quad dominant exercise. It's primary mover for sure. Quads and legs, quads. or excuse me, quads and glutes, they're not the same thing. No. Not, not even close. They're part of the lower body. That's about the only uh, similarity that they have. Mm-hmm. It, wouldn't it make sense to but not it, do a leg dominant exercise right. to, if you're looking to develop your glutes? I mean, the glutes, their their involvement in the squat is really just at the top of the squat, m mostly. If you have good mobility. If you have good mobility. <laughs> so all that all that down. That's why a lot of bodybuilders, in particular, like geez, I can think uh, of uh, an example, Aaron Reed, who is you know we've filmed with him before his. Uh, uh, we've we've worked with him in the past, and he is a very tall, high level bodybuilder, huge guy, and he purposely would stay low. He would never come all the way up because he's like, I do squats for my legs. I do squats to grow my quads. Mm -hmm. He he's, he wasn't ever doing a squat for his glutes. He and he would purposely because he's so tall, stay deep in, yeah. in and never come fully out of. Uh, uh, you know, to to the top, unless he was like racking or <laughs> racking the weight back. So he, uh, there's an example uh, why I bring it up of someone who used the squat as uh, a method to grow his quads, not anything to d to do for his glutes uh, necessarily. So it, it just goes to show you that, and he's pretty smart when it comes to training. You know training proper training right. or isolation or targeted training for you know in Im impacting a particular muscle and and that's really what you're going after with this squat myth is that that's just the wrong exercise to focus on if you're really trying to you know change your glutes now um, what's uh so what's the second biggest glute development barrier um given just i understand people's time is precious mm -hmm. the biggest barrier that people they carry with them is that I don't have enough time to get in a good workout or yeah. they follow a, a workout like a super long workout that's not suitable for them I mean I get it I'm, I'm a father of two you're a dad of two we work full time I mean we we still exercise but we have a social life we do things with church and all that good stuff so we don't have time to just you know piss away in the gym right just hoping something works so the biggest glute development barrier that I see, and I guess it might not be a specific to glutes, but it kind of is, is that you don't have to spend a lot of time in the gym. There's something called, you know, high intensity interval training. They're super short workouts, but they're right to the point. They get the job done in the shortest amount of time. And as a strength coach working with athletes, mm -hmm. th these athletes might not have, you know, more than 30 minutes given to a workout because, because they're at you know, at practice, they're perfecting right. their skills. Exactly right. So you have to, you know, that's what we learn in school is like how to do the most amount of work in the least amount of time. You know, you don't need to spend 15 minutes on a warm up. You don't need a foam roll. You don't need to, you know, take selfies. You don't need to do all this this van this vanity baloney. Like you just have to get right to the point. So I mean, there's research out there, not a lot, but there is enough research to conclude that. Short, fast, intense workouts are are valid. They get to the point. They get the job done, and they actually do work. Sometimes better, given the certain situation for certain individuals, they do work better than a long, drawn out yeah. workout. And you're more likely to stick with it too. You know, when people that's the practicality of short workouts. Right, these twenty to maybe you know thirty minute routines are very reasonable to people. I mean, you could this is something you could squeeze into your lunch break. Uh, if you had only an hour in the middle right. of the day, you know, well, geez, if I eat for 30 minutes and exercise for 30 minutes, there's my hour, you know. Um, 
and or you could squeeze it in the, the start of the day or at the end of the day uh, pretty easily uh, 30, 30 minutes you know an, an hour or more seems really daunting and exhausting to people so then they end up just skipping the whole thing right. because they just feel ah, I just don't have that kind of time I don't have that kind of energy and the you know body weight sometimes doesn't get it all the credit that it should but it's so um, you know, I recently was talking about body weight training with, with Funk Roberts and stuff. I mean, there's just, you can get into great shape and maintain a really nice physique with just body weight stuff, you know. Yeah, obviously your your max effort lifts may, may suffer a little bit, but if that's not your goal, Who I mean, cares? That, that, right. A lot of people aren't trying to be power lifters or world's strongest man. They're trying to feel good, look good, you know, and be build up their confidence, you know, and in, increase their longevity, have better overall health. And you can do that with body weight stuff, and you can get a better looking butt pretty darn fast by doing just like three or four of these exercises consistently. Right, and the glutes are the powerhouse of the body, yeah. and they can be. You can work them, and you can work them hard, and you could probably work them hard pretty much every other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're kind of one of those muscles that recover extremely fast yeah. if you train them appropriately. Yeah. But and another thing, what you know, I, I what I understand a lot of people, and this that just I, I dealt with this all the time with my clients and athletes is that when I gave them something to do on their own chances are they weren't going to do it. It's a, it's called accountability. It's willpower. It's a, I understand that getting to the gym has an accountability level of itself. You get in the gym, you're like, all right, I'm here. I'm going to do it. But not everybody, one, not everybody has access to a gym. Maybe you're traveling, you know, when you're on vacation yeah. or um, the weather is not good or you can't afford a gym. Like you, you almost have to understand that the gym is out of the question. You have a decision at that point to say, hey, I'm either going to work out or sit on my butt and do nothing, and I'm just gonna keep flipping through Instagram or keep watching these videos or keep reading these articles about something that I wish I could become. Mm-hmm. It comes down to willpower. Like, yeah. but you need to know that you need to stick to it. You can't just expect one little 20 minute at home workout mm-hmm. to get the job done. No, right. it's a cumulative effect. Same thing that would apply if you're going to the gym. You gotta stick with it, yeah. no matter what you want to do. If you want to hit the snooze button in the morning. You're just giving into a, a lazy attitude, if you will. Mm-hmm. But I understand, yeah, there's not always you know the right s- situation for the right time. But just know, again, and then we'll move on to the next one, just know that you can get a good workout in your living room, body weight only, under 20 minutes. And just like you, I don't like spending wasted time in the gym. I don't have two hours a day. I, no. I barely even have an hour a day. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, they look at my physique and they say, oh, you must spend hours in the gym. I'm like, no, I don't. No. I spend maybe... Four, I'd say 40, probably 40 minutes. Tops. Tops. Yeah. On average. I mean, on, on, when we do and our team workouts, it's an hour, yeah. but tops 30 to 40 minutes. So that includes a warm up and, yeah. and a yeah. cool down. And that's four to five days a week. Yeah. Yeah. You right. Were, absolutely. And all, all we ever do, you know, either one of us really on the weekends is we, we're active with our children yeah. and maybe we do some walks or, 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 yeah. or occasional jog or something like that. Right. You know, obviously you just got done training for a marathon not the, that long ago. The, but, but the whole, the whole reason behind that is because one, I don't want to waste time. That's going to pull me away from my kids and my wife and other things that I enjoy doing. But it's also wasted energy. Mm-hmm. We have a limited amount of energy each day. And why do I want to waste it when it, it's going to produce nothing or something very small? You got to weigh out the risk or weigh it, weigh it out to see is, is this worth my time? I mean, I understand. I'm a strength coach. I study exercise. I've been doing this for almost yeah. two decades. You now. have an advantage. Over- I have an advantage, but that's where things like this and our YouTube videos and all of our products and free programs. It's my information that I've learned and experienced passed on. And I just, I'm here to help people. Like yeah. I, people like just say, oh, you're just trying to sell something. But yeah, we're a business, but I have yeah. so much free information that if, yeah. if it's changed my life yeah. and I know it can change your life, yeah. I want to share it with as many people as possible. And that's why glutes, yeah, it might be seen as a vanity part or, you know, like a physique part of the body just for purely aesthetics, but no. It's the powerhouse of the body. So much comes from the glutes. Mm -hmm. And anything vertically, anything horizontally, even rotational movements, it starts from the glutes. It transfers up, it transfers down. You have to keep your glutes healthy. And and you have to 
just do whatever it necessary in order to get those glutes where they need to be. Yeah. And the likelihood of you as you age, having better balance, oh, yeah. just having more confidence and independence uh, physically, if you have good, strong glutes, that's going to carry you through for a long oh, absolutely. time. You know? Thank you so much for watching the Critical Bench YouTube channel. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Leave us some comments or questions. Click subscribe for more videos from us. Check out this amazing five-minute glute workout and another video from us right there. We'll see you in the next one.